Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God Compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish and chicken, pounded yam with ikusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup and so much more. Call us 752-3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. I bring you greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Bridget Ogbefun and this is Gateway to Life. And I am very sure that God allowed you, wherever you may be, watching me, hearing the sound of my voice, or whichever means you may be accessing me right now, there's a reason why God allowed it to happen. And my prayer is that what God has in store will not elude us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor because you are God. You are not just God, you are a good God. And Lord, we want to say thank you for being God over our lives. Father in heaven, as I'm about to go into your word, Holy Spirit, I ask that you take over my lips. Wear me like a garment today and speak your words to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that young person, that old person outside there that needs this word for the moment. Lord, wear me as a garment and speak to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you will do what you alone can do. Thank you for this medium, this vessel that you use to be go inspirational network. Thank you because higher heights is their portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You continue to open doors upon doors in the mighty name of Jesus. And the doors of the gospel that they have opened shall never be shut. In Jesus' mighty name I've prayed, amen. And so you are welcome to Gateway to Life. I'm excited to be here today. And I know that you are because it's a time to receive from God. And so this morning or afternoon or whatever time that you may be seeing this, I would want to speak on a message that are titled, Do Not Sit on That Seat. Pardon the accent, eh? but you know what I'm talking about. Do not sit, S-I-T, on that seat, S-E-A-T. So, and I believe that the Spirit of God will help us, you know, to understand what he wants us to know through this world. And you know, I quickly check up the meaning, sit. S-I-T, it means to be or remain in a particular position or state. It means to remain in a particular position or state. If you want, it means to be static for a moment. It means to be, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word motionless because you could be on a seat and you, you have motion, your hands are moving and all that. But when you're sitting down, you're not making any progress in terms of motion. You are not moving forward. You are not advancing. You are on a spot when you are sitting. And so this morning we want to look at that. Do not sit on that seat. I don't know who needs that word today. And for today, our, we will have a case study in the scripture, from the scripture. Our anchor scriptures is Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10. And we all know the story, you know, about the four lepers you know, who decided, who made a decision, who decided to move up from where they were seated and made a, 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 an advancement. And then we will see by the grace of God, you know, what happened to them at the end of the day. It's a long read and 
I want to read as fast as I can. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in, windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Verse 3, And there were four lepers. I want you to listen attentively. And there were four lepers. There were four leprous men at the entering, at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Don't forget it's from verse 1 to 10, but I want to take a pause here. This is a situation where obviously there was a, a, a famine in the land of the um, Syrians. And the prophet of God, Elijah, had given a prophecy from verse 1. He gave a prophecy of something that seemed so impossible. And he said, by this time tomorrow, such and such and such will be sold for a shekel. By this time tomorrow, such and such and such will happen. And then somebody stood up and challenged him and said, even if God were to open the windows of heaven, can these things be? In other words, you know that this is impossible. You know that this is something that cannot happen. In the midst and around all of that, the Bible says there were four lepers that were seated at the gate of that city where famine was prevailing, where there was drought, where there was no food, where there was nothing to eat. These four lepers sat by the gate and they came to themselves and said, why sit we here? Why do we decide to be in this static position? Why do we make up our minds not to progress? Why shouldn't we advance? Why sit we here? If we go into the city, famine is prevalent in the city, we will still starve and die. If we stay here, there is still a possibility that we will die. Why don't we make an advancement? Why don't we take a step of faith? Why don't we move forward? If they kill us, well, good. If, we, if they spare us, well, good. And so I've come to speak to you today. I don't know the seat that you are sitting on. I don't know the position that life has kept you like these four lepers. I don't know the area of your life that you are undergoing serious drought and famine. I don't know where you are stuck right now. And you, you, you are in between two worlds. You don't know what to do. I don't know the prophecy that has been given to you like Elisha did and people are mocking in you and say people are mocking and say how can how how can these things be how can you say God is calling you into a ministry when everybody knows the kind of life you are living I don't know that thing that has been said about you that seems so too real to be true but I've come to tell you today Take a leaf from these four lepers. The Bible says even though they were stuck at that gate, they decided, if we sit here, we will die. If we move forward, we, we, there's a possibility we will die. So let's at least not be caught dead, not doing anything. Let us not die in our state of not doing anything. Let's move forward. Come with me. And then the four lepers decided, they said we will, we will go into the city. If we die, we die. If we, if we succeed, we succeed. In life, there are different seats arranged for us to sit on. You must decide and choose the seat that you accept. 
The devil has a way of arranging things so that you have no choice than to be in it. Is it the seat of failure? Is it the seat of retrogression? Is it the seat of fruitlessness? Is it the seat of, 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 of sickness? Is it the seat of lack? I don't know what seat the enemy has arranged. To the four lepers, he arranged them in that place to be in that helpless situation. And may I quickly remind you that in the days of old, leprous men were outcasts. Leprous men were men that could not relate with the other people freely. Leprous men were not only physically restrained or restricted. In their features, they were termed to be incomplete. Because what leprosy does, like I would have explained numerous times on, the, on, this, on, on, on this platform that I will explain to us. Lepro leprous men, most of them had their fingers chopped up by that disease called leprosy. Their limbs were damaged. Their toes were gone. So they didn't have proper balance physically. They could not even stand or have a good grasp of things physically because their, their body parts were damaged by this, this disease called leprosy. So they were disadvantaged on many sides. Nobody wanted to relate with them. Nobody wanted to talk with them. I remember in those days where I come from, the leprous people had their own village far away from where the normal people were. They were termed to be abnormal, not fit enough to be in the midst of people. In all of this description I'm giving, I don't know who amongst you has gotten to that level in life that you feel like a leprous person. You feel that you don't fit in amongst your peers. Some of us don't even interact or socialize, not because we don't want it, but because we feel ashamed of ourselves. Because we are not proud of the achievements we have made in life. And you interacting with people and socializing, they'll begin to ask questions. And perhaps when they start asking questions, they will find out that you are not making any progress. And so because of that, you stay away, you seclude yourself, you stay away like these four lepers. But you know what the Bible says? Look at that scripture we read in 2 Kings chapter 7. The Bible made us understand very well that these men were lepers. They had a seat they were supposed to be on. The leprous seat, the restricted seat, the seat that, 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 that makes you not to be able to advance. The seat that, that gives you that opportunity to fall in a place feeling sad. Because nobody wants to be where you are. No help, nothing. It was clear that that was the position these men were. But in verse 4, they said to themselves, if we say we will enter into the city, then the farmer in the city will kill us at the end of the day. If we sit here, we will die also. So let us arise and make a decision. And so number one today, what is that decision you have to make? Remember we just said, do not sit on that seat. How do you get out from the wrong seat? Or how do you avoid sitting on the wrong seat of life? And what kind of seat should you avoid sitting on in life? Number one, do not sit on that seat of self-pity. Because that's what the lepers did. They refused to pity themselves. They refused to sit there to, together and be crying and be feeling sorry for themselves. Oh, nobody likes us. Nobody wants us. We can't relate with nobody. Oh, poor me. Poor me. I don't know who you are. That is what you are doing in your closet. Crying and wallowing in self-pity. But I've come to tell you today. Do not sit on that seat of self-pity. Come out from that seat because it's, it's not for you. You have to determined to excel. You have to make up your mind and say, I will not be on that seat like the four lepers. They decided, we know we are no good. We know nobody wants to be with us. We know even if there's possibility for us to leave, nobody will bring it to us. 
There's that opportunity in the place of, or, or in your office, there's an opening where you could be promoted to a, a higher position. Nobody wants to tell you, even if you need to apply for it. Nobody wants to tell you about business opportunities or things like that, where you could make an earning for yourself. Nobody wants to interact with you and advise you so that you can, you know, progress from the position that you are in. That is not enough reason for you to sit on the seat of self-pity. Come out from it, my dear brothers and sisters. Do not pity yourself. Go into what God says. Make a decision. Be like Esther. Esther came up and said, if I perish, I perish. But you and I know that Esther did not perish. So you have to stand up from that seat of self-pity. Like these four lepers did, they decided. They rejected the seat of self-pity. They made a decision. They advanced. Hallelujah. And when you see what these men did at that time, to the laymen or to the ordinary men, they would have seen them as stupid people taking bad decisions or making bad decisions. They would have seen them as putting their lives at risk. How could you decide to go into the Syrian camps? Don't you know you could be killed? But I've come to tell you, when you decide and make up your mind to reject the seat of self-pity, God has a way of making everything work together for your good. The leprous man said, why do we sit here? We are rejected and outcast, but why do we sit here? We know nobody cares about us. Why do we sit here? We are down already. Why do we sit here? And so they advanced. Another seat that you, you must not sit on is the seat of indecision. Based on this story of the four leprous men we just um, read, you must come out from that seat of indecision. And in place of indecision, be determined to excel. Be determined to prosper. I don't know what you are trusting God for. If it is sickness in your body, be determined to be healed. Be determined to come out of drought and want and lack and poverty. Be determined. Come out from the seat of indecision and go on that seat of determination like this for leprous men. I look at from, from, from verse, verse, verse 4. It says, if we say we will enter into the city, then the fire man is in the city and we shall die there. If we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the holes of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. Look at verse 5. <laughs> and they rose up. The four leprous men rose up. Let's pause there for a while. The four leprous men did not only make up their minds that they were going to take the bull by the hand. They did not just discuss about it and leave it there. They did not just write it as resolutions and leave it there. They did not just write it in their diaries and leave it there. The Bible says that after they made the decision, after they came out from that zone of indecision, they became determined to take that bull by the hand. The Bible says, and they rose up. And they rose up. And they put action to the word. And they put action to the thoughts. The Bible says, and they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no man there. Behold, there was no man there. They were determined to excel. They were determined to conquer their fear despite the limitations that faced them. What stood out to me in this portion of the scripture 
the leprous men, they did not look down on themselves. They refused to be held back by their limitation. The Bible says, and they rose up. They said, I will not sit on this seat of indecision. They said, we will go, we will do something, we will act. Just like it is said in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1. The Bible says, and Daniel determined, and Daniel proposed in his heart, and Daniel made up his mind. He said, I will not defile myself with a portion of the king's meat. He decided. He said, no matter what comes my way, I will not be distracted. My eyes is set, set on God like a flint. I saw these four leprous men. They decided, they rose up. The Bible says they went into the camp of the Syrians. When you look at verse 6, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots <laughs> and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host, that they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Because these four leprous men made up their mind, they stood up from the seat of self-pity. They stood up from the seat of indecision. They became determined and went into the camp of the Syrians. You know what God did? God confused the Syrians. <laughs> He made the sound, the steps of leprous men sounded in the ears of the Syrians as the step of a mighty army. These were men that their footsteps ordinarily were almost unnoticed because don't forget I told you leprosy would have taken off their toes. They had incomplete, in, they, they, their, their legs were incomplete. So they won't even have proper, they, they, they don't, they don't, they can't step hard. Imagine how it would be you stepping on the ground to the extent that it will be audible without your toes. That is how they would have been struggling to walk into the city. But God turned their weakness into a strength. Why? Because they decided to move forward. They decided to come out of that seat of indecision. And God turned Kalato Seteporo, turned their weakness around. Are you watching me this morning or whatever time? Are you like those lepers? And God is telling you things in your mind you feel are inachievable or unachievable or too big to be true. Your dreams that you don't even know how you are able, how you will be able to achieve them. And God is telling you, take a step. I have come to tell you today. Do not sit on that seat of indecision. Do not sit on that seat of self-pity. Rise up and make a decision and see what God will do. God confounded the Syrians. And the steps of four leprous men sounded in their ears like the step of a mighty army. And you know what happened? They fled the city. They left the scene. They left everything they had. And the four lepers men take out time to read the scriptures. Second Kings 7 from verse 1 to 10. And the four lepers men, they went into the city. They did not only have enough for them to eat and drink at that moment. They had more than enough to cut away. They had more than enough in jewelry, in food, name it. They had more than enough because they made a decision. Hallelujah. So you must come out from that seat of indecision. Another seat that you must come out from is the seat of fear. The leprous men did fear. The leprous men stood up from the seat of fear. They said, if we die, we die. But the beautiful thing is that in most cases, people who make such decisions, they don't die. It's all those who even keep their lives that lose it at the end of the day. Do not sit on the seat of fear. Fear will keep you down. Fear will hold you captive.
Fear will stop you from achieving what God has called you to do. Fear will stop you from commencing what God wants you to do in life. Fear will cheat you of the good things that God has prepared for you. And so you are watching me this morning or whatever time. Is it ministry God is calling you into? But because you are calculating, I don't know how to speak. What do I tell them? What word do I give them? But you know in your heart of heart God is calling you into ministry. My dear brothers and sisters, stand up from that seat of fear. Walk in that boldness. Because you know what the Bible made us to know in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy from verse 1 and 7. I want us to see the scriptures directly. You have to come out from that, that seat of fear. You must to stand up from that seat. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I'll give you another scripture. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, telling you today that I don't know what God has told you. I don't know what he has given to you. I don't know what vision you have. That fear is about to cripple. Listen to what the word of God says. Look at what the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 41 and Verse 10, this word is specifically for somebody out there. I don't know who you are, but hear what God says to you today. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. He says, fear not. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So I leave you with these words today. Come out from that seat of fear. Do not sit on the seat of fear. Like the four leprous men. Make up your mind and take that decision and watch God back you up. Someone once described fear as false evidence appearing real. Do not be crippled by fear. Do not sit on that seat. Until I come back your way next time, I want you to go rejoicing knowing that Jesus loves you and he wants you to excel. Shalom. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish and chicken, pounded yam with ikusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup, and so much more. Call us 752-3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefun, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m., on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.